Creative director Daniel Rosebery, who was plucked from New York, has had a roller coaster ride since he joined the surrealist couture house of Scaparelli three years ago. The pandemic shattered his opportunity to show his cleverly crafted designs in real life. But he has turned problems into triumphs. From the designer's bold jewellery to his extravagant accessories, he is making a dramatic statement about high fashion and high jewellery. I am Susie Menkes and I am here in Paris at Scaparelli on the Place Vendôme to see the beginning of Haute Couture. Hi Susie. Hi. Hi. How are you? This, this is a great moment. I um, can't believe it's really happening and that we're looking out on the Place Vendôme. I know. It's the first time I'm seeing you not on a screen in a year and a half. Well, basically. it's the same with me. Yeah. But, um, Thank so, you for coming. So, well, it's wonderful not only to see you, but to see some of these wonderful things that you're going to open to the world yeah. on Tuesday. Yeah, these babies of ours that we've been nursing for the past four months. So I'm very excited for you to see it. So, well, it looks wonderful. But first of all, before I study them, um, I want to talk to you about what you've been doing through yes. these um, difficult years. Hmm. I mean, you're young and artistic. You're from New York. How did it come to turn out that you're doing this collection for this designer? Well, I'm actually, I moved here from New York, but I'm actually from Plano, Texas, the literal opposite side of the world in a way. When I moved to New York, I started working for Tom Brown, as you know, and that's where I was trained. You were 10 years there, weren't 10 you? 10 years, yes. just over 10 years, yeah. When I look back at the sequence of events that brought me here, I still can't believe that they all happened because I, when I left Tom Brown, I didn't have a job. I left um, with nothing in the pipeline in a way, but I knew that I needed to take a leap, but I didn't know what that looked like. But my mom told me, leap and the net will appear. So I did. And uh, soon after, I think two or three months after, I met Diego, who um, owns Scaparelli and, uh, and he asked me to do a project. And um, I spent one month putting together a project and then I brought it here and the rest is history. Well, I'm very excited to think that you originally came from Texas. What do you think you brought from Texas to Scaparelli? It seems the most unlikely combination I could imagine. It is, and I think that's what I'm bringing. It is the most unexpected um, history I could, I could think of in a way. Not only am I coming from Texas, but my childhood was really dominated by the church in a way. My dad was a priest. My brother ended up becoming a priest. My sister married a music minister. So church was really the family business. And I, I went to a seminary to meet with the dean of the seminary to see if it was something that I wanted to do. Because I really thought I belonged in the church. And he said, absolutely not. You have to go to New York. So I think that it, it brings a sort of um, an irreverence maybe because I feel like an outsider already. And um, I'd like to think that it, it gave me some sort of freedom in a way that I don't feel like I have to play by the traditional rules of couture. You're certainly not going by any of the rules, right. and nor were you when you went out onto the runway yourself. And right. in the centre there, right. you set up, I'm not quite sure how to describe it, you were drawing your drawings of the clothes, yeah. and you were sitting there and you were being watched by all of us in those days before the pandemic. Yeah. Um, there were literally thousands of people around there. What was that idea? When I was approached for Scaparelli, I was unemployed. I was sleeping on the floor of a friend's apartment in Soho. And I spent a month, every morning, it was in December, going from my apartment to my Chinatown studio. I had a rickety old Chinatown studio underneath the bridge. And I just had this vision. I said to myself, if I get this job, the first show has to somehow tell this story of this unemployed uh, guy just walking to, through Chinatown designing a couture collection. And one month later, I was here in one of those salons presenting my project on the Place Vendôme. And the, the disparity of the situations was so inspiring, I thought, I really wanna show people how this collection was conceived. 
And for me, the most accessible way or the most immediate way f to do that so far has been really on the red carpet. And I know that sounds crazy, but those, the, the people and the women that we've dressed on the red carpet are creating the culture today. Like we just had Cardi B announce her pregnancy two days ago wearing Scaparelli jewelry. I know it's not a collaboration with Dali, but it has the same sort of gut punch culturally that I think is, is that I think was kind of adjacent to her time in a way. I mean, what about Lady Gaga then? And Gaga, it, it, yeah. It was quite something, wasn't it? Having a, the inauguration, is exactly. that what it's called, isn't the it? The inauguration, exactly. For the new president. Yeah. And um, I mean, how did you feel when you saw her wearing, I know you know that she was going to wear them, but it must have been an extraordinary feeling to look and see and think this is part of history and I am part of it. It, you know, it's one of those moments that you have no idea what it means. It was so overwhelming. And only after, months after, did I really start to understand what a moment it was for the house, first and foremost. Because I think when people write about Scaparelli today, they're gonna write about that moment and it's something that you'll never be able to escape in a way. But no, it was incredible, really incredible. You've put a lot of work into what you're making and I'm looking here having a peep ahead yes. of the um, opening of the um, show, the digital show. Yeah. And we can see a lot of, I don't know how to describe it, a sort of decoration, but it's much more than that because yeah. everything appears not to be put on from the outside, but to grow from exactly. the middle of the fabrics and sometimes from the middle of the body. Exactly. So tell me about that technique. Last season was really about challenging the uh, traditions of couture. And this season was sort of the complete opposite. I wanted to really set out to execute embroideries that felt totally unique and almost barbaric in a way. Like, you, of course you have things that are an homage to an iconic Scaparelli. Like there are other pieces where the bijou were created to fit inside of the embroideries and, um, you know, I love that word barbaric. It's something that I always think of when, when you think of a Scaparelli jacket, the, the huge embroideries just superimposed, appliqued onto the garment. And I love that kind of copy paste sort of sensibility. It's so irreverent and it felt really modern for me. But when you say irreverent, it's not true, is it, in terms of the work that's put no, into it? No, I mean, your people here, I don't know how many you have, you can tell me, but um, how long it would take them to do some of these things I'm looking at. I mean, we're not talking about something irreverently flung together with someone no. with a needle and thread. No, that's, the, that's the, the only way that this works, I think, is that we can really be irreverent in our attitude and in the imagery and in the proportions and crude in a way, but the work behind it has to be um, according to the traditions of couture. And we have people here, we have a very small team actually, but they are the real guardians in a way of the, of the techniques and, you know, but it, Susie, what I've been saying too, I mean, you're one of the first people I'm talking to, but actually what I've been feeling is that this was the first season that I really fell in love with couture, a surrender, almost to what I think of when I close my eyes and I think couture, I think of the, these kind of embroideries, this kind of jewelry, these kind of gowns, and uh, almost to the point of fetishizing those classic couture ideas from the, from the 80s and the 90s. So that's kind of how I, how I approached it. I'm fascinated to hear you talk about your family background, which is yeah. so involved in the church. Do you think some of that was soaked into you by your childhood? I do. I think the ceremony of church and, all, and the garb and the huge flowers and the, the incense and, you know, I mean, we, I was raised in a, an, an Episcopalian church, so it was very traditional in a way. It was mixed, I mean, it was in te Texas, so it was mixed with a modern mm -hmm. touch. But I do, I do think that a lot um, of inspiration has come from, from the, my time in the church, visually, also the, the dynamic. Anyways, yes, I agree 100%, yes. Um, Elsa Scaparelli herself 
um, sort of reached her peak in the 1930s. Mm -hmm. Then she was so involved with Salvador Dali and with everything that was going on. Isn't it harder today to pick people who are poetic and artistic and turn them into a dress. Right. How do you get away from that? How do you make it original, absolutely something that belongs to you? Mm. That's a great question. That's what I'm thinking or trying to figure out every season in a way. I think that I'm really not afraid to embrace, and I think you see it here. I think you'll see a lot of homage moments throughout, and I like that. But I think there is such a numbness that people feel today. And I think more than it being even original in a way, I think it's, for me, I'm like, how do I get an emotional response from the audience? And that's really how the jewelry originated. I knew the scale of the jewelry needed to be gigantic. I knew it needed to be so huge that it would jump out of the screen and just command your attention. And I think about that a lot. We only have 26, 27 looks this season, but each one I've tried to be thinking to myself, cover of a magazine, cover of a magazine. How do we make this something that is so visually striking that you can't unsee it? You're young, in your 30s, you're dynamic, you're very original. Are you the savior of French haute couture? <laughs> um, I have no idea. I am young-ish, maybe, and uh, I don't know. I, um, but I think that you kind of have to believe that you are on some level, you know? You, someone told me before I started here, they said, you don't have to have a big ego, but you have to have a strong ego. You have to know exactly what you are doing and who you are, and that's what I think of all the time. I feel proud to be sitting by some of the creations that you've made that look so fantastic. And I can't wait to see them on screen. I Good. cannot wait for you to see them, really. I think you'll love them. I hope you'll love them. Good luck and have fun. Thank you so much, Susie. Thank you.